Hey guys, how's it going? So we're out here fairly early this morning to take a look at the cut flower garden and the maize garden. I just want to update you on how things are going out here. It's about 6.45 a.m. and I came out early because it's been so darn hot. Today's high is 109, but the benefit of high desert type of heat is one is dry heat. So like right now, it's about 67 degrees and about 50% humidity. And then by you know mid afternoon, it'll be close to 109 and about 15% humidity. So you do get a little bit of a break from it. The plants get a break from it, but it's kind of a good time to take a look out here, I think, because there are several things that I need to pull and get ready to plant something new. And there are some things that are just coming into their prime. You can see the sun is just beginning to peak over those trees and it really is is a precious time in the garden. I'm starting right outside it because I did want to give you a quick update on how the berries are doing. Uh, so our blackberry bed had a little bit of a struggle. Uh, the plants were not getting quite enough water. I didn't realize it. I realized it in time, like they're fine, um, but they've got some crunchy leaves going on, but they are producing some berries, which is really exciting. We've got four different varieties here. I have not labeled them yet. In fact, I need to go back and probably watch that video <laughs> to determine what varieties are in which section, but they are rooting in, doing well, and some of them are even shooting up some nice brand new canes. These are looking especially good. I'm happy about that. This right here is our bed of fall golds, which, oh my goodness, they are just one of my favorite raspberries, a gold raspberry, high sugar content. You can see that they are just forming up berries all over the place. And these, I didn't touch this spring. I didn't cut them back, uh, except for the producing tips of them from last year and we did get an early crop a small one because this is a small patch so far uh, but they were delicious and we have been digging suckers so we let them grow to where they're bigger than this one here and really even bigger than this one and we've been digging them up these are some that we dug up earlier this year and planted and they rooted these are some that we planted later when it was really hot the tops typically die but the roots don't so i expect those to actually root in and produce some new growth here pretty quick. Grapes are looking really good. Those are the two I thought were dead this spring. They took forever while well, they leafed out and then they got frozen. Uh, so they froze back and then they leafed out again. And then these are the ones that were sent to us. The Niagara variety, look at this. Already starting to grow up onto the trellis, I love it. Heritage raspberries are growing. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is, but they love their life. Look at them, second year plants right here just absolutely loaded. I cannot wait until they start ripening up. Oh my goodness. <gasps> oh, we've got a couple little ones. Oh, how exciting. There's a few more in here. I'm gonna leave them so I can bring the kids out here later. Seriously, the best part and my most favorite thing to grow at this point is berries and fruit uh, because it's something that we eat a lot of and to come out here and be able to pick fresh organically grown produce is just the best. I love it. Standing back out here in the grass pathway, you can see that the grass that Aaron and Paul seeded earlier on the season is doing really well. You can kind of see where last year's grass is and where the brand new grass is. But just last week, this entire center section was completely torn up and trenched. I'm not even sure I took pictures of it. It's been so hot that we've been kind of doing the minimum to keep things happy, like making sure things are hydrated, making sure things, yeah, basically hydrated. And then we come out and try to get our projects done as quickly as we can. And then we kind of retreat in the heat and do some things that are, you know, in the studio or closer to the house in the shade. Um, so anyway, this whole area was trenched up for sprinklers. So we're going to start seeding the grass pathways first on the exterior. Um, so around the outer part, which I'm excited for, I'll show you why when we get closer and then we will do the interior a little bit later, but it really does like that's something that Aaron really wanted. And at first I was like, Oh, I don't know, you know, mulch is easy maintenance, you know, um, and we won't have to mow or edge, but grass really brings the visual temperature down. It brings the actual temperature down too, because you are irrigating it. Um, it does make it cooler. It helps with weed suppression. It helps with so many different things and it does, it does look nice. So I'm excited for it. So we'll be doing this outer section and this outer section next before we tackle the interior. So for a while there, we'll only be able to access what's going on in here from this direction. Uh, but you will notice some flags as we walk in here. Like there's some purple flags there, some orange flags. Those are indicating where sprinklers are. So let's start with this section right here, the maize garden. It's just awesome. 
it's growing in so beautifully. You can see there are some sunflowers growing here. First variety that blooms every year for us is the Pro Cut Plum. Um, but these containers up here are doing great, filling in beautifully. The little fence of zinnias is doing really well. Uh, this front row here, I did Magellan and Profusion, I think were the two different varieties I kind of blended together and seeded. You can see the difference here. So we've got some great big blooms and then there are some smaller blooms. This variety, or this side rather, did not germinate as good as the other side did. I don't know why that is, but it doesn't really matter. We've got really beautiful color here and it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. Instead of putting another ranch panel fence up front, I wanted to put something that was potentially a little bit shorter and colorful that would kind of create our barrier uh, and our wall, I guess, in the front. Containers up here are doing really well. We've got the luscious citron lantana. Uh, I need to do some work on the geraniums here, some deadheading. Oh, I can't remember, was this a purple, something rock and deep purple maybe, or something like that, I don't know, salvia. Not really keeping up as well as I would maybe hope for it to keep up. Better in this pot, but nice color. And then on our arbor here, the vines are taking forever. And I do remember that of like the black-eyed Susan vines here, this is the coconut appeal. You can see they've thickened up big time on the ground. And you know, if I was taking more of an active role in their growth, I could help them, you know, grow up the trellis. I could encourage that, but they are starting to take off on the twine that I tied off on the trellises or the arbor rather. The Ruby Moon Hyacinth beans are doing a much better job at growing up. And I started those from seed here. So anyway, we've got kind of a nice ground cover going on <laughs> at the moment. Maybe by the end of the season, we'll have some more upward growth, but it's just a good, I guess a good learning thing for me. Maybe doing more beans on this or a quicker growing vine would be a better approach. Or maybe we do uh, squash or something like that or cucumbers uh, that can grow and kind of dangle from the arbor. I think that would be cool. As we walk in, you can see we're definitely getting the maize effect that I wanted. The corn has grown beautifully and we haven't had to lash any of it to the ranch panels which is kind of awesome. The reason I set up this garden space the way I did is kind of twofold. One, I needed uh, some kind of a trellising system for our corn and sunflowers because every single year, I don't know why it is, doesn't matter if I plant it in blocks, does it matter, uh, yeah, where I've planted it out here, it always seems to topple over and I have to go in mid-season and tie it all up. Um, now we haven't had like a severe windstorm like we normally have, I mean, Hopefully that doesn't happen, but it seems like just having that trellis nearby and the way that everything's kind of set up here, it hasn't been as bad and the corn is just growing beautifully and the sunflowers are growing beautifully. And the other reason is I just wanted to set up a fun space out here, something that was exciting. You know, we planted, last year we planted uh, vine crops only in this area, which was fun too, uh, but I like to change it up. And doing something like this just made I don't know, it's just been such a fun thing to watch grow and fill in. So we've got the ambrosia corn right here in these areas. So these are just dry stacked brick right here. Um, nothing fancy, like you, you could step on them and completely topple the whole, <laughs> the whole wall. The infrastructure is not super solid right here, but it indicated like a little bit of separation and a little bit of formality. I had an issue kind of figuring out what I wanted to plant underneath the urn. You can see the urn's doing really well. We've got the toucan coral cannas in the center there. And then we've got the salvia here, which is doing so much better in this container than it is in the front ones. A new osteospermum, the Bright Lights Horizon. I feel like, so you don't have to deadhead it in order for it to keep blooming, but I do feel like, let me shade it a little bit more. I feel like it would look better if I did deadhead it. I'm not gonna take the time to actually do that, but anyway, that's just kind of what I'm observing here. And then we've got a new Supertunia for next season. This is a Supertunia um, Midnight. Nice deep purple, smaller flower. And then there's a Raven Sweet Potato Vine and the Sweetheart Lime Sweet Potato Vine. And then down below, I planted one Supertunia Vista Bubblegum on each side, so four total. And then I did a line of the Bunny Tails Grass which some are doing really well. They looked horrible when I planted them. You remember that? <laughs> I talked about how it was kind of faith in planting because they pretty much all looked like, well, I don't even think there's an example I can show you here, but they looked kind of dead when I put them in the ground. And the same thing happened last year. I left them in the tray for too long, uh, but I planted them out anyway, and they just needed a second to root in, and then they just started growing beautifully. So 
I'm hoping by, you know, just not too long, they'll fill in even more and you won't be able to see as much of the drip tape here. And then on either side, I've got Lady Godiva yellow calendula. And that square is exactly the same as this one right here. Our pumpkin vines are doing really well. We've got several different varieties in here, but this one right here, Cinnamon Girl, you can see pumpkin in there. You can see one right here. This one is Casparita. Look at that. All of the pumpkins are like clustered around the center, but they're looking great and there's a whole bunch. And then we've got a variety called Wolf over here. This one is slowly producing some pumpkins. They're little right now, I'll show you in a second, but this vine seems to be the one that's struggling the most. I've had to trim out a few of the runners because they just like are crispy and dry. I have noticed some squash bugs, so what we've been doing, uh, they're clean right now, but I think I found them right before they started taking off, and I went through and I just, I spent like, I don't know, an hour out here hand picking the adults off, squishing them, and then I checked every single leaf for eggs. <laughs> And I did that for a couple of days, maybe two or three days. And I think I got on top of whatever was starting to happen. We sprayed them with Captain Jack's and then we put some of the powder down, um, the diatomaceous earth. And I think because these are watered from underneath and we don't get a ton of rain, uh, I think that that kind of handled it. So we're reapplying the powder uh, and just keeping a really close eye and things are looking a lot better. You see little itty bitty baby pumpkins there. There's a ton of blooms in here, um, but right in here where there's a kind of an open spot, that's where I I trimmed out some of the gross looking stuff kind of taking off in that direction right now look at this definitely maize this is our second crop of corn right here it's up a couple of feet and these are all starting to form their ears these right here are the pro cut lemon so pollen free I just noticed yesterday actually yesterday evening when I was driving around checking on everything I noticed they were looking especially good so I'm gonna come out and cut some of these today Let's keep walking through here. Oh, look at this. Isn't this amazing? We've got a few of the tall ones starting to bloom. This is the evening sun. We've got more corn coming up down here, second crop. Here's our opening that leads us out front, our little bistro set. Imagine being a kid and running through this. I kind of want to expand on this idea and maybe uh, do a few more layers of maize next season. Had a little bit of trouble with our germination on this variety here. You can see, which one was this? Red Hedge. And I actually replanted them and they did the same thing. So I think maybe that seed, ah, just, I had it from last year, so it's not old seed. I don't know what, what the deal is. I mean, they're right next door to my tomato plants here, which some of them are doing okay. Some of them have collapsed under the heat. I actually had to pull that one couple days ago. I didn't worry too much though about having a gap here because I have so much growth right here so it kind of still feels a little closed in. There's Russell. Hey buddy. Okay popping back out front here we've got our flamingos that Samantha loves and our pumpkin vines are doing great. Look at all these blooms. Oh my goodness and there's pollinators all over at the moment. Oh I love it. So these right here are Howdens and I did see I saw a couple pumpkins the other day. I know one pumpkin is outside the fence. Well, I know we've got a Jack B. Little right in here too. So there's some pumpkins forming up um, on this one here. And then these two are Howdens, which there's one right out there. And here's a look from this side. So I think I could do something. Well, I was initially gonna plant corn in these. So I had something tall that created another kind of maze feel right here, which is something I might do next year. But I've really enjoyed these urns being here as well. Okay, let's pop out. Ooh, that sun is bright. And here's the zinnias on this side. See how much better the small ones came up on this side? It kind of gave me the look I wanted. Some color down below and some color up top. I've been cutting on these and cutting on these, everything out here, in fact. And things just are doing really well. You gotta love those crops that really thrive in the heat. Here's our tomatoes, which really have kind of like shut down with all this heat. I don't think they really like it above, what, like 90, 95? and it's been over 100 for a while now. Once it cools off, they'll start back in. And in fact, you can see like they're, they kind of fold up their leaves um, just to conserve water. Uh, so some of them are doing a little bit better. I noticed that the ones over here, closer to the corn, they are a little bit more protected. They seem to be thriving a little bit better than the ones further out. The one that I had here was the orange accordion, and that was the one I was really excited for. I started most of these out here from seed. I put the tray out 
uh, of the greenhouse, I can't remember when it was, but we had such a cold spring and we had a unusually cold evening and a lot of the foliage of the tomato plants turned purple. They looked like still alive and the leaves were, uh, other than being purple, they looked fine. So I thought, well, we'll just plant them out here and see what they do. Most of them took off. That one just never really shook that one evening. So I've got more tomatoes going in the greenhouse that I started way early, like they've got tomatoes on them. After we get past this heat wave, like next week, it's supposed to be in the low 90s. I'm gonna start planting again, like all the holes I'm about to show you, I'm gonna start planting some seedlings I have going and I'll plant new tomatoes out here. And some of them have produced quite a lot. I think this is the Bosque Blue Bumblebee, maybe? Yeah, there are tomatoes all over it at the moment. The leaves see to what they do. There's nothing wrong with them other than the fact that they just are trying to conserve water and that's how they do it. So anyway, I do need to do some, some extra pruning out here as well. Uh, this one is the sausage tomato. <laughs> Look at these forming up. These right here are the Hill Marmond right here. So there's a whole bunch of green ones. We'll just have to wait for them to ripen. Anyway, kind of the same story for all of our tomatoes here. We have uh, picked several already. In fact, I've got a few on the counter that we're gonna eat today that I picked last night. Okay, let's hop over to this corner. We just recently pulled larkspur that was spent right here. Uh, there was white finch orlea right here. So we're gonna reseed the white finch there. I'll probably seed some cosmos in this area uh, because we still have time for them to get up and going. But we'll just kind of go quick through the other things I have here. We've got some Nicotiana. This is the peach screamer. I planted this last year and this came back on its own. Really pretty. In fact, this year has been a little bit more haphazard out here because so many things from last year reseeded themselves, maybe right where I put them last year and sometimes a little bit further away from where I put them, but I've been just letting things kind of go. It's fun. This section, we've got pincushion flower. All of these started from seed, either in the greenhouse or the studio. Annual varieties here looking really beautiful. You can see them in multiple stages of bloom. And I like to cut them and use them even in like bud form right there when they haven't fully opened. So we've got some, I think this is the Merlot Red. I'm not gonna go variety by variety, but you can see there's some really gorgeous like pink over here. The Fama series is one of my favorite because look at what the spent blooms look like. Aren't those gorgeous? I love to use these as a textural element in our arrangements. And then here's one of the blooms, a little bit more fresh. The Fama White right here. They're just so big and fluffy. <laughs> Look at all these pollinators. Looks like they're just waking up. We've got more baby Famas right here and then Bells of Ireland, which we'll probably pull here and I won't even have to reseed. We'll just water, keep watering and they'll come up again in this section. This next aisle here, we've got Lysianthus, which are actually doing better than I thought they would. They're just starting to bloom, which is exciting. I left these in their trays for way too long and they looked pretty bad when I planted them out. In fact, I don't even think I showed when I planted them out and it was already hot. It was already in the 90s when I got to that project, but they've all rooted in. They've all started to form up a bunch of buds. So they'll fill in this section and provide a lot of color. We've got African daisies right here which right at this moment, a lot of the blooms, like they open up during the day. So it's a little bit early yet. Um, so a lot of the blooms aren't open, but they've been really fun. I don't know if we can force one of them open, but they're kind of a creamy white. And then toward the center of the petal, they've got purple and flecks of orange and yellow. We've got Crespedia right here, the drumstick flower looking good. And then we have a row of stock, which has been very interesting because it's a, it's a cool season crop. A lot of them are starting to fizzle out except for the quartet rainbow. I'll get down there here in a second. This year has been the best for me, even though the, they don't look awesome right now, they look so great for so long and they produce the big long stems like you see on the packaging. Uh, some years for me, they haven't produced uh, super tall length like they produce really pretty flowers but they're very like branchy and they were a little bit hard to use in arrangements but this year they've given me the long stems and I don't know what the difference is maybe it was the longer cooler spring and then of course we've got a row of snapdragons looking great still they tend to just produce through the whole season I don't stake anything up you can see that um, right here I don't put any netting cordonova netting nothing uh, things just kind of tend to stay upright. We don't get a ton of rainfall and maybe that's why. Uh, but I would think with the amount of wind we typically get, things would fall over more than they actually do. So I just don't go to the trouble of it. 
unless I see, you know, something that really needs it. And then in this row, we've got status, which this is the very first year I've started it from seed myself. So I'm super proud of this crop. I love it. So easy to grow it. I just didn't even realize it. And these look the same, whether they're like freshly in bloom or dried, which is amazing. Um, and I've been cutting on these a ton and look at how many flowers there are. It's amazing. We've also got some Cosmos coming out from last year and I'm just letting them go. But let's walk down this aisle. I did want to show you like, for example, look at the stem length on this stalk. This is a nice bright white one. I could still, I mean, it's starting, this one's starting to fade. You can see I've cut all the other stems, um, but nice long, nice long, strong stem. The Quartet Rainbow variety, I think I've cut more of that one than I've cut of any other variety. And you can see like I've cut the other ones pretty clean. This one just like produces more than I could ever cut. It's amazing. And some of them, most of them have like nice long stems. Some of them are a little bit more branchy, but they're an amazing color. Like a very soft yellow and soft pink, super fluffy flowers, really wonderful scent. I've been really impressed with this one and it looks fresh still. Like the leaves even look fresh as opposed to some of the other varieties that these are clearly like we're getting ready to pull these probably this week. So that's been a fun discovery. And I noticed that, you know, in growing a whole bunch of cutting flowers, which I hadn't done in previous years, I mean, it's just been a few years now. Um, it's fun to discover those varieties that just perform really well and hold up to your particular climate. Everybody's dealing with such different things, different types of insect pressure, different types of, of weather. And like the Quartet Rainbow might do amazing for us, but maybe not as well for some of you guys, but it's kind of fun to be able to hone uh, your list of flowers and really figure out those things that do especially well for you. The rest of this row is China asters, which I really, every year I say I need to grow them on their own, and I really do. They're getting way too much moisture. So the leaves always look horrible, but they always produce blooms. <laughs> These are getting ready right here. Uh, and I always strip all the leaves off anyway, so it's not been a huge deal, but I think um, they would do better. And I planted these out really late too, and they looked pretty poorly. So they're looking a little bit better, believe it or not. Um, anyway, I think planting these on their own underneath cover, uh, will maybe make them a little healthier looking. And then we've got more snapdragons and lilies, which are done. Um, I need to come in and deadhead all of those cause they are perennial and I want them to focus on root production, but I was surprised we even got lilies. I planted them last year, kind of in the middle of the summer and only a couple came up and bloomed and I didn't even see growth on any of them, like no leaves or anything. So I thought, well, I got to it too late. They've maybe rotted out here, who knows? And then lo and behold, this spring, they all kind of sprung forth from the ground. It was a really fun surprise. In this row, we have a Dianthus, a sweet purple white bicolor, which have produced so many blooms. We have a uh, calendula of some type, but it looks like the zeolites. Um, but this reseeded itself here and I just let it go. We've still got some cabbage, which at this point we can harvest. These are some red acre. There's a few I left earlier to form up and they have, we've cut a few of them. And then the mahogany splendor hibiscus. Do you remember when I planted these out? how little they were, they have put on some growth. And now that they've started in, they will take off so fast. And this whole row will be filled with just gorgeous leaf texture and color. I noticed this morning, see that wet spot? I have a leak right there in the drip tape. I need to fix that. And the last two rows have Walla Walla onions, which we're just getting close to harvesting. Look at these, they are gorgeous. Doing so great out here. And then we had ranunculus and anemones in this space here. Um, so we've gone through, cleaned those out. All of those corms have been uh, cleaned and prepped and are in storage at this point. Um, and I've got seedlings started to plant in this area. I do have a few trays of seedlings in the greenhouse right now that will be ready to go out next week. I, I could plant them now, but it's still like today's 109, tomorrow's 109 um, or 110. I can't remember. Really, it's too hot. And those seedlings, I don't want to subject them to that. So I'm waiting until it goes back down into the 90s. I'll get those planted out here, but I started them in the greenhouse because I'm much more consistent about watering or checking on things for water in there than I am out here. Um, like I could easily seed those crops out here and just make sure they stay moist. Um, but that would mean dragging hoses way out, way further than I have to in the greenhouse. So I figured that would be a little bit easier. Our dahlia patch is going for it. It took it a while because it was so cool. Um, but you can see we've got some color going. I've cut a ton actually out of this space. 
it's almost kind of nice that they're a little bit more compact at this point. I know they won't be for long, um, but it's kind of nice because we can walk the aisles really easily and I can reach all the blooms really easily. I also haven't fertilized anything out here other than when I planted them. So these got some Land and Sea Compost Biotone Starter Fertilizer when I planted. Um, haven't come through and done anything else on any crop out here in this space, which things would probably benefit from that, but I don't typically do a mid-season feed, even on our dahlias. And there are some real pretty ones out here. Some real pretty color. <laughs> Look at these on these short little plants. Gorgeous. Oh my goodness, this one's called Lake Ontario. Look at that one. I love the clear yellow. That one's beautiful. And our staking system in this area is T-posts and then uh, some string. <laughs> this is just like nylon rope. And we're kind of doing like the Florida weave method of staking here. Last year, we just tied a single string, um, you know, down the length of these stakes and then would lash the dahlias that needed to be staked up to the string as they started to topple over. This year, Paul actually came out here and did this. This year, we're kind of just trapping them inside a double row of string here, just so they stay nice and upright. I mean, no problems with toppling yet because they're just not big enough, but I think this will be really interesting just to see how this works. And then the last two rows in this area, we have a bunch of peppers. So like just a bunch going for it here. I mean, some of these plants are just loaded up with fruit. It's just so exciting. And look at this one. It's just full. Oh my word, <laughs> look at all of those. Of course, the Thai hot chili peppers, they're always loaded. Then we've got some jalapenos, serranos. These are the hot and heavies right here. And then we've got a couple of cucumber plants, which have produced, like they look so little, but they've produced so many cucumbers. Look at this, look at this. I need to harvest these today. Look at all of these. This is the variety Suya Nishiki. Uh, they produce really long, really um, firm cucumbers. It seems like that seedy core in these just isn't as big and isn't as mushy. And any cucumber that's past its prime, I cut them in half lengthwise and toss them in the chicken coop. <laughs> like, look at this tiny little plant. This one's got cucumbers forming up. These right here, there's two of them that look like zucchini style. I need to give these to the chickens right here. Our rhubarb is looking really good. I planted three of them in here. So crimson cherry, these will come back every year, of course. They looked so sad and puny when I first planted them. In fact, a few, let's see, I think two of them um, went down to like the nub, like no leaves at all. And they had to reproduce leaves, but these are looking so good. We're past the point of being able to harvest this year. And on a first year plant, I probably wouldn't harvest much anyway, but I think next year we're gonna be able to harvest lightly. And then after that, we'll be able to just go for it. And then we have our two rows of zinnias on either side of the pathway. I think next year, it would be pretty to do two rows on either side. So do peppers somewhere else and then and cucumber somewhere else and there's do zinnias all the way up to the rhubarb. And then on this side, uh, do zinnias on the first row of course and then zinnias on the second row. Let's see, I've got a few perennial things right at the end. Um, like right here, we've got nasturtiums seedlings are just kind of coming up and rooting in. We've got chocolate flower and a few uh, gomfrina I planted in here late. Balsam peppermint stick and then I've got some delphiniums I started from seed. I'm wanting to plant more and more perennials in here. I need to I need to unearth them from my squash plant though. My goodness. Anyway I've got delphiniums that I'm going to cut the blooms from a few of them today and then I've got fever few which is a perennial and I need to cut those back as well. So this is what they look like after their flush of bloom. It will come back and probably shear them back by about a third or a half or so. And then they may throw up a few more blooms this year, uh, but they were in bloom for a long time this spring and early summer. So on this side, I'll be able to plant zinnias about up to the delphiniums there. And that way it'll just amp up the color like leading up to the cut flower shed there. In this row, we've got white mignonette, which we are gonna pull this next week and reseed. In fact, you can reseed that one every couple of weeks for continual harvest. You can see the long, how they have got like long stems. They're a really kind of soft, wispy white, beautiful filler flower. And then I don't know what possessed me, but I decided to pop a couple of small butternut squash starts from the garden center in <laughs> this area. Um, yeah, so we can't really walk down this way very easily, but they're looking super healthy. I wonder if we've got any squash forming up. I actually haven't even looked in here. I'm 
bunch of blooms. I'm gonna go to the other side and see if we can see anything. Uh, on our way, we've got beans right here, jade beans, which are just starting to produce some beautiful uh, produce here. Some, and then at the end, we did the dragon's tongue beans, which looked a little bit sad compared to the jade. Yeah, I don't know what is going on with those plants. Like this one looks good. This one doesn't, I'm gonna pull that one. And these don't look good either. It almost looks like scorch. I don't see any bugs on these at all, but that would be weird because not all the plants look like that. And the jades look awesome. Next row, we have all the strawberries. So 90 strawberry plants, I have to say, a couple of these varieties have impressed me thoroughly. This is the seascape variety right here. Every other day I come out here and I can fill not the small berry basket, but the large berry basket, two of them normally. And so I've been uh, cleaning them and then freezing them on a sheet pan and then putting them in a baggie. So I've got a whole big um, Ziploc bags full of strawberries, fresh strawberries because we just can't keep up with all the fresh eating. <laughs> Isn't that a good problem to have? I mean, especially because I wasn't planning on doing the strawberry project this year. I thought we would want to build a raised bed somewhere, which we probably will eventually, something where we can harvest at, uh, you know, while we stand. Uh, but anyway, it's just been so fun. Look at that. Look at the size of that berry. They're huge. And then right here, I can't remember the variety, but this one right here is the quinault. Um, this is a really tasty berry. They're not quite as big, and you can see that this variety is not holding up to our high pH quite as well as the seascape. We're seeing some big signs of chlorosis here, which, you know, we can treat these with chelated iron and that'll fix them. Uh, but it is a really old-time variety, really popular variety, and it has produced really a lot of berries that are tasty. And then we've got some varieties that aren't producing right now. They're more um, like a spring crop type. So they are done for the season, but very robust. Right here, we have a bunch of amaranth that seeded itself from last year. It's awesome. <laughs> Didn't realize it was amaranth. I thought for a while it was celosia um, and it's clearly not. And I thought the celosia and the cosmos that I seeded here would blend nicely together. And then as the plants kept growing, I thought, nope, that's not celosia, those are amaranth. Those are gonna totally overtake the cosmos, but I let them go anyway, because I did not plant amaranth anywhere else. So these have been really nice. I use them a lot in cut arrangements and the cosmos will still bloom. We've got a whole bunch of other ones right here. Uh, this right here, this patch, this mangy patch is uh, carrots. <laughs> so uh, these are Danvers carrots that I planted last year and I wanted to wait until the seed discs were mature and they are not yet because I wanted to harvest a bunch of seed. You can see the bloom heads here. In fact, some of them are fresh still, see that? And then when they dry up, you can harvest so many seeds from these plants, which is awesome. Like I will never have to buy carrot seeds ever again. And then we've got our potatoes. <laughs> These are getting close to being harvested. Um, so I planted four rows about 18 inches apart from one another. Uh, so 240 feet of potatoes out here. Um, some of them are a little bit further along than others. In fact, I came out here and uh, I posted on Instagram actually where I pulled up this potato plant just to check to see how things were going because these are starting to flop a little bit. And I can even see like, I can pull up potatoes right here. See that? I think we're gonna have pretty good yields, but I'm gonna let these go a little bit longer, like right in the center here. Seems like they're flopping a little bit faster than the rest. But you do wanna wait till your plants yellow, start dying back, which is what we're getting in here, and flopping over before you harvest. So I'm gonna let these go a little bit longer, and then we will probably, I'll show you when I harvest them. Should be pretty nice, I think. I mean, based on what I'm seeing already. And these last two rows, I've got a tomato on the end of either row because I had a couple extra tomato plants and I had a little bit of extra drip tape at the end of these because the uh, ranch panels didn't quite span our entire 60 foot length, uh, which was perfect. But our sweet peas aren't quite as big as they were last year. And I don't know, I mean, they are a cool season crop, so I know that they slow down when it gets really hot. However, they usually do, pr I mean, it's been over 100 for days and days. They're still blooming and looking fresh and beautiful. But I think maybe last year, because it was a little warmer earlier on, they put out a tremendous amount of growth and they got like taller than these ranch panels are right now. Uh, maybe this spring it was just too cool for too long and they didn't put on as much growth and then they've just kind of stalled because of the heat. Who knows? 
every year they do different things, but I am pleased with the amount of blooms and the amount we've been able to harvest from them. And that is it for the four corners of the cut flower garden. I mean, it's kind of a, an interesting time because you know, you can see a lot of the crops were ready to cut back or pull out and plant some fresh things, but we're just holding. We're holding until this heat wave is, has passed because nobody, one, really wants to be working out here when it's 109 degrees in the full sun. Um, but I don't think that plants, especially like my seedlings would really love to be thrust out into that kind of a, a climate. But it is really fun to see all of the things that are producing and thriving and doing amazing even though it's been so so hot and I know it's been for a lot of you guys too. Um, so we will probably pick up this next week and do some major work out here and I'll uh, try to bring you guys along for that. We'll be cutting stuff back, pulling stuff, planting things, tidying up. Um, you know you can see like in that ranunculus row where we took everything out we went back through and put a new layer of land and sea compost down and we try to prep each area as we clean it out so it's ready for the next thing. The only other thing that's gone on out here other than the sprinklers going in in the interiors that the sprinklers did go in in the orchard um, so it doesn't look any different but I think this next week that we'll get it all programmed and we can start watering there and we might go ahead and seed it. Uh, so it will be so nice to see some green in there because right now it's pretty brown <laughs> and we've been hand watering the trees um, so it will be so so nice to um, have something automatically watering the trees. I think the trees will benefit from that. Um, and it'll be nice to have some grass down so that it can just, you know, we had some really, I mean, pretty noxious weeds. It was pretty, but you know, we had purple mustard and some other things in here. Um, when we plant grass in here, it will take care of all of that. A few of our trees are really producing nicely. This is a, set, a Santa Rosa plum. We've got several fruit that are gonna ripen up here. And then our nectarine tree is just loaded. There are beautiful nectarines all over in here. Look at that. Oh my goodness. And I don't know what temperature it is out here right now, but it already feels good to stand in the shade. I think we've only been out here for an hour, maybe less. It sure is a fun space though, you guys. I've just been so thankful to have this area just to try things out, not really have a definite pattern of you know how we plant things like of course this year we left the dahlia uh, structure in place so that we could just you know not have to put all those t-posts somewhere else N this next year i'll probably leave all of the stuff up in the maze garden and just develop that space a little further um, and the rest of the stuff we just will rotate around and that's it you guys for today's tour i was just so excited to come out here and show you how everything was doing good and bad i feel like especially in a space like this there's never a point in the season where everything looks peak because everything out here has such a different schedule. But that's the beauty of this space. It's such a wonderful area just to experiment with things, try varieties we've never tried before and learn. I'm learning so much about how to do things differently, how to do them better, um, when to plant things, um, when not to plant things. And you know, I learn by doing. I don't, I'm not a researcher and I'm not, I don't learn by reading things very much. I learn much better from actually trying it and failing or trying it and maybe succeeding. I kind of get a mixed bag of results out here. <laughs> anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're able to get out in your gardens and enjoy your space too. I know that like early mornings are starting to be the time when I need to get things done. And it was a feat for me to get out here at 645 this morning because we stay up late. I know we've talked about it in recap videos and stuff, but we are night owls. I used to be a morning person. I think ever since we had kids, it kind of has shifted my schedule a little bit, but we're doing our best to kind of shift back. And I just, I love the mornings out here. They're just amazing. So anyway, thank you again. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.